Hello everybody, welcome to this episode of Mysteries with me, Shane Todd, and him, Kieran Bartlett. Kieran Bartlett. Is have you worn this knitwear in previous episodes or is this no, debut? This, this is fresh, this is a debut. This is a debut. How much knitwear do you have and is it all, would you say, authentic knitwear? Um I have quite a lot and no, it is not all authentic. I have you, a cu- I have a couple of pieces from Marxies. Now you know what I'm saying by authentic knitwear is in I mean bought in a little independent corner shop in Donegal. This is well this was bought in a little independent corner shop in uh Kenmar. Right. Um mate, check out that lining. That's what you want there. Feel that feel nice. how nice that is. That is thick. Isn't like, it? That this is, is thick. I mean this is do you know what this is too warm to be worn in June. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this is authentic. I have a couple of. It's just sorry, the light of Spamian is. It's already on. <laughs> it's flashing. Yeah, I just you have me, a lot of just, pieces. Just let me say this: I have a lot of pieces. I have I have one piece from Yukomo, and then I have the rest uh, from John Lennon's wife. Say what? John Lennon's wife. Uh, yeah, she knits for me. <laughs> she's like, he want John wants you to have this. You know what she's doing? She's not breaking up world class bands. <laughs> That's that's close for five <laughs> She yeah. made she made one for me one day that was too small. And I just went woman. She went from that's, that's word piece to pieces. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if that works. Anyway, if you've never watched or listened to an episode of Mysteries before, this is a limited series from us here at One L Studios. We look at historical legends, myths. Tell the story and then debate whether we think that they happened or not. Yeah. We need a, a catchier thing of like myth or did happen. <laughs> myth or history. Uh, needs to be like cool. Like this needs to be on a myth t-shirt. Or, I want this to be a lunchbox. Yeah. Myth or yeah. I True or false. <laughs> false. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Legend or untrue. Legend or. I'm not very good at this. Myth or Alex. hit or myth? Hit or myth? That's re- that's really good. That's I said I wasn't good at it, and then I was. That's it's really like, good. It's, it's like Let's f- uh, pat the head of the Napoli soy boy for that. Nice. He loves it. He absolutely loves it. Twist his nips. No, don't do that. The purple said, You can't do that. Yeah. Right. Let's get stuck into this episode. I am presenting you with uh, the subject this week, which is King Arthur. The legend of King Arthur. Now, let me get a flavour for what you think of this from the outset. You've also said, sorry, before we recorded this, you said, this isn't something... And this first time you've ever said this, you went, this isn't something I know a lot about. I think I think one of the reasons why I don't really know too much about it is because, like, when I was a kid, the, the history side of this seemed like bullshit. And then also, the, I didn't like the Disney movie, The Sword and the Stone. Yeah. So why I'd never got into it because it looked shit. It was it was it was outside of the golden years of Disney. Yeah. It was too late. It it wasn't in the the Cinderella type era where everything looked amazing, and then it wasn't Aristocats. Aristocats is outside of the the golden years as well, and then it's not, and then it's not in the second golden period of Disney with like Aladdin, Beauty and the Beast. No. Can I tell you something? My mom got remarried in nineteen ninety three. They told me to include me and make me excited about it in some way that I could pick songs. The DJ had said I could pick three songs. I picked three tracks from the soundtrack of the Aristocats <laughs> and, and he never played it. And I was like, Mum, I disapprove of this marriage. <laughs> You've read this. What age are you, about five? 17. <laughs> <laughs> I was five. That's unbelievable. I wet myself at the wedding in protest. Did you actually? Story. Yeah. In Any- protest? Anyway. And I tried to make it look like it didn't, and I just lay in a hedge. It was like a low hedge in a courtyard, and I just lay in it. And I was like, and I was like, oh, I have not wet myself. And I think my, co- my cousin or Monty was like, no, yeah. Sounds like you have. And I was like, ah, you're not my real dad. Anyway, uh, deep emotional issues. King Arthur. So, yes, I remember seeing the film The Sword and the Stone, um, but I... It was that long ago that came out. I didn't really know that was anything to do with King Arthur. I thought that was just a story about a boy trying to take a sword out of a stone, which it kind of is. But here's the thing, though, right? Yeah. Well, I'll I'll let I'll let I like the poster. But I they, really like that. Are these not they? They look like new posters. That first one. See, see, see that one there. See the one that's like five across, yeah. or the next one over now. That's the way I remember. That's the sword that's, the stone. that's it, isn't it? Yeah. 
Yeah. That one there. So I, I all I'll say this, you know the way they talk about Adam, Adam and Eve and whether it was the apple on the tree and then people some people say, Wasn't the apple on the tree? It was the purr on the ground. What does that mean? They didn't get fucked out of Eden for eating apples. They got fucked out for riding each other outside of marriage. Now, that's uh, that's a, a theory. Story for I me, wonder, it. is there an allegory here? Of I think it's, that is the former US president. He shot his mate, didn't he? He shot his mate? Yeah. Al, Al Gore? Yeah. Is that true? He shoots someone? No, that was, that was Rumsfeld, wasn't it? No. Rumsfeld. It was Al Gore. Was it, Al Gore was the guy that made the Inconvenient Truth or something. Dan, and then, Google Al Gore shot his mate. You would have thought being so close to the Clintons, he would have found more inconvenient truths than, you know, global warming. But anyway, <laughs> um, the, the one that... Sorry, I wonder if the sword in the stone is really an allegory for, you know, you're not so much taking a sword out of a stone as much as you're, you it's know... Ta- stone out of a sword? Taking your, taking your wallet out of your jeans, like, you know what I mean? I think it might be like that type of a story. Dan you know Delago I mean? shot his mate. Dick Cheney shot his mate. Dick Cheney shot Dick his mate. Cheney. Anyway... What I'll do is I'll present a version, if you want to call it that, of this story. We can talk about it. We can talk about uh, references of it in popular culture. And then we can say whether it's hit or myth. Or myth. Yes. Should have done that at the same time. Sorry. Anyway. Hit or myth. So, I want to take you back to... I want to take you back a long time ago when Pussy was a kitten. <laughs> that I never tell you... That my dad, my dad was a mechanic, and there was a lady whose car he used to fix, and she was really, really old, and she would always say, "Dear, I haven't seen you since Pussy was a kitten," and it always made me go. Ah. <laughs> anyway, I get a boner. So, um, the, I'm taking you back to Roman, the Roman age in Britain is over, right. and I mean just over. So, what we would call Britain today has been plunged into the Dark Ages, which I love. I love this idea that there's this period of history where they just, it was so grim that they just didn't document, like there was no document of it. Like we don't know what happened over such a long period of time in the Dark Ages. So that's why the legend of Arthur is really difficult to corroborate in any way because it's said to have happened in that time. So if you're going to lie about a story, this is where, when you would set it. So from the outset, this initially makes it a bit sketchy. What are you laughing at? Just if you're going to lie about a story, this is when you would set it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, oh, there was this fella and all. And they're like, oh, show us. And he's like, I can't, mate. It was in the dark. <laughs> Fuck's sake. It was, this is the dog at my homework for his stories. This is, this is uh, I've had six whiskeys <laughs> on a night out. <laughs> oh, all this mad shit was happening. <laughs> was it? I don't know. <laughs> I blacked out. I woke up in Thompson's fucking pulling a sword out of box. <laughs> so, yeah, the Roman age is just over. It's uh, like the worst, like the worst time. Like e- the great, everyone is trying to capitalize on the fact that there is like no rule. So everyone's killing everyone. The Saxons are coming over from. Denmark and a couple of other places. Uh, so it's chaos. At this time, there is a figure called... Uther? Uther Pendragon? I just remembered his name. What about that for a name? How, does, how, how do you like that? Uther Pendragon? Uther, Uther Pendragon. Sounds like a great centre back. Uther Pendragon. Yeah, no nonsense. He sounds like a guy who'd be unreal at a World Cup for Costa Rica, gets signed by a club in England, and he's like, he's not brilliant, but you're just like, oh, I remember him. Yeah. Uther yeah. Pendragon. So there's a guy called... A Brian Ruiz. Yeah. There's a guy called <laughs> Uther Pendragon. He is, you know, a little bit of a king. He's trying to... He's trying to take over, you know? He's trying to rise up in these horrible times and exert some sort of authority with them. What's it why you looking like that? I think the title Pendragon means like ruler of all Britain. He was the ruler of all Britain. Right. But he wasn't being recognised as such. Right? Because Because his first name was Uther. Uther, right? Yeah. He's he's like a knockoff version of Luther. Yeah. Right? He's Uther. So Do you remember the Out Here brothers? You could say it like Yeah, you could say it like Uther instead of out here. 
Oh Just yeah, Uther. the Uther, Uther brothers. Uther brothers. So boom, anyway, boom, boom. this uh, sword, sword, sword. No way. No. Nah. Stone, stone, stone. No, I don't know. That stop. So this guy um, wants to like rule. He wants to take over. Um, there's other shit here. Fucking. We're not. We're not going to get into all of it. Basically, he's mates with Merlin, the wi- the wizard. No. Merlin is people don't like Merlin I because like at Merlin. this point, because of the Roman, like the Roman influence, means that people are now like in Britain starting to get into the idea of like one god, right? Right. So they don't like boys like Merlin running about doing abracadabra, putting rabbits out of hats. He's the, Merlin's the original David Blaine, right? So Merlin's getting like a lot of shit from people who literally think he's the son of the devil. He's getting called things like that. So, but Uther Pendragon is like, Merlin's my boy. All right. Do you ever so, wonder about people like Merlin, though? What about, he, like, wizard types? Like, what what did he know at that time that made him a wizard? Do you know what I mean? I you know, like, the first person you saw with a blackberry, you were like... Yeah. <laughs> like, what, what, I think that's what he had in those... An but he actual text anyone. blackberry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I just wonder, like, what did he, like... Like, did he know fireworks or something? Like, what did he know? That he just was like maybe they knew sleight of hand. Maybe that's what it is. Maybe they showed people magic, but it was. Just I always like, think that like druid figures and wizards and all, sort of just like deck shakers out in the forest. Like, you know what I mean? Like, maybe they just, did stuff like this, right? Come a wee bit closer. Maybe they went yeah. like this. Maybe back. No, they wouldn't have had AirPods, right? Yeah. They would have had the the wired ones. Yeah. But he goes, um, <laughs> he goes, silly joke, right? He goes, well, he probably went. Like, Come a wee bit closer. I'm not going to do anything yeah. weird to touch you, right? No, no, you're with your head, no. Merlin probably was doing this. Look, right? He goes here. Oh, oh right, no, no, yeah. no! He goes here. What's in my hand? Open your up. your pods. Oh and shit! Yeah. yeah. So he's probably doing stuff like that. I was. I was. I was so, like Darren Brown. Uther Pendragon says to Merlin, "He's like, listen, I want to become the ruler. I want to get Britannia." This is, is this maybe? Sorry to interrupt. Is this maybe when he was just Uther? He's just. He's Uther Pen. <laughs> and then Merlin's like put dragon at the end of it <laughs> you mean my bastard so he goes uh, he goes listen I want to take over what am I going to do here and Merlin's like what do you want to do he goes well I think it was the Duke I think it was someone in Cornwall I, I've got this wrong there was there was some guy and Merlin went I I basically he, he, I'm sorry for saying this he goes I want to buck his wife Merlin did? no Uther Uther Pendragon goes right. I want to buck this fellow's wife Merlin goes, ooh, 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 dirty bastard, right? Merlin goes, I will help you with that, but if you do this, she is going to get pregnant. But, and he, and, and Uther Pendragon's like, mate, I don't care, no problem. Oh, he's a wizard, isn't he? If you buck her, she yeah. might get pregnant. Ooh, but Merlin magic. goes, you're going to give me the child, though. That's the deal. Uther Pendragon is so horned up, he goes, Yes, mate, whatever you need. There is a time when... Gor- you know, Gorlos. 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 Uh, yeah, Gorlos of Cornwall. Duke of Cornwall. He was the so Duke of his wife. Cornwall. Yes, it was his yep. wife. It, so he's going to fucking ram the Duchess of Cornwall, right? right. So Here, there's there's a standoff. Cornhole. What? There's a standoff. <laughs> Merlin goes, I'll help you out here, but remember, I have to have your kid. That's Give me your kid. And the guy, like, at that point, it's like, it's like when you need to go to the toilet, and someone's talking to you, you'll agree to it. You're like, yeah, yeah, I mean, no, no worries. Yep, 100%. Except it's even stronger now because he, he wants to nut. Yeah. So it's like, Uther wants to drop a wee dragon, like, you yep. know what I mean? Um, so Merlin, what Merlin does is he come up with a strategy. They pretend to retreat. The, ki- the, the Duke of Cornwall goes to follow them. Well, they're actually like having a battle. Oh, oh there's a battle. Imagine actually having a fucking staged pitch battle like to be like here I will buck your wife that's all the time and we're starting Helen of Troy Helen of Troy that's what I'm saying we're starting to realise that this is a historical battle people battling pattern. over like fucking it's all specific the specific geese like, it's all it's over crazy. the nut yeah. so uh, that's the name of your Netflix special specific geese <laughs> so Merlin gets a little potion out of his out of his. he gets a trinket out of his waistband throws it in the air and what does he do he turns Uther Pendragon into the Duke of Cornwall he takes his form. Then Uther Pendragon, as a Duke of Cornwall, like the film Face Off, danders in, back into his castle. 
the daughter's there. His wee daughter. She's like, Daddy. He's like, Get the fuck out of not, He's like, Oh, that's right. I am your dad. And he goes, You go to bed. That's you going to bed now. And then he. And the 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 wife, she can't believe it because her husband hasn't looked at her like this in years. But he's like, We're getting it on. They get it on. In the morning, he leaves. As he leaves, the the real Duke of Cornwall, is his body is brought in by his friends. Because in a battle with the Pen Dragon's boys, he got killed in the night. Mantle. So the, she's just had passionate sex with her husband for the first time in years. This is, In real time, he leaves, and she's like, oh, that was unreal. Smokes a fag, opens the shutters. <laughs> op- opens the shutters. And, the, and Karen, Karen, there he is. Dead as fuck. Yep. Dead as fuck. And she's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And they go, yeah, he fought bravely overnight in battle. She's like, well, he just... That, I don't understand. He just fucking, he just fucking opened up a battle in my monks, yeah. Let me tell you what happens. Uther Pendragon takes over the Duke of Cornwall's place. He gets in there. Cornwall. They have a kid. He gets, he gets with the wife. Egrain. Egrain. Gets with Egrain. They have a child. Egrain, if you will. Go ahead. T-Pain. They get together. They have a beautiful baby boy. She goes, she goes... <laughs> How can, she said, I'm worried. He said, why? And she went, I don't know if this baby is yours. And he goes, oh, no, it is. Because he doesn't want to tell her. She said, I think it's the spirit of my ex-husband. And he's like, yeah, dead on or whatever. He then has to give the baby to Merlin. So she's screaming. And he's going, I made a deal with Merlin. And Merlin's like, I'm taking the baby away. Merlin knows that this baby, it becomes Arthur. Right. Holds the key to like a new age of Britannia and, right. and the rightful heir to the throne. He takes the baby to this noble knight called Sir... Uh, it'll come to me. Sir... Sir... It's like uncle or something. Right. <laughs> it's not uncle. He gives it to this guy and he goes, raise this boy as your own because he's going to become very important. The guy's like, yes, mate, no bother. Let me tell you that's what. That's a I, lot. Sorry, that's a lot to uh, unpack. Take in. It's because his, historically, yeah. when people say things like, oh, it was, he took on the form of the Duke of Cornwall and then bucked me. Yeah. It's here, he stuck on that guy's clothes on <laughs> a prosthetic neb. Yeah. And fucking jumped in. Right? Dan, do you find this guy, is it Sir, Sir Irk or something like that? Not yet. Uh, 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 anyway, anyway. What about, she's a, she's a liar. And they hear Uther. Yeah. Dirty, dirty dip, bastard. Dip and wee bastard. Dirty Ma- and Merlin. Actor. Sir Actor. Right, so he's got his own kids. And he's going to raise his boy's own. I think that uh, inspiration has taken... Game of Thrones took inspiration for that with Jon Snow and Ned Stark. Because Ned Stark already had his own kids and then he took in a son who then becomes like the main guy. Right. I think they th- there's definitely a crossover, I think from the legend of this story. Potentially also Prince of Egypt vibes. Mm-hmm. Uther Pendragon dies <coughs> in battle. We could go into that. It's not really important. He <coughs> dies in battle. And there is no... See the battle he died in. This is the only thing I want to know. Was it about another specific gay? It's bound to be. Isn't it? It's bound to oh, be. Oh, I really want to really buck this one now. <laughs> yeah. Battle. Lads, Merlin! Get the horses out. Merlin's the, the Dark Ages equivalent of Merlin going up to girls in disco and be like, will you go with my mate? Do you know what's mental though? How sound are like Uther's army? Uh, he, he literally has an army of lads being like, here, will you see my mate? And if you don't, I'm going to cut this other guy's throat. <laughs> they accept. They're just like, he's a horny bastard. What can we say? Historical top shagger. Historical top shagger. Absolutely. The soy Absolutely. boy loves it. <laughs> So Uther Pendragon <clears throat> um, ends up ends up dying in battle. As he die, uh, I I I think it it doesn't matter. I think it's in in a battle with Saxons who are trying to invade. As he dies, he with his last breath takes his sword and puts it into a stone because Merlin has told him that whoever has that sword. Will basically rule Britannia. Mm-hmm. Like you, he says, with with your life, protect that sword. So uh, that's what that's what he does when Uther Pendragon's dying. He 
he shoves the sword into a big rock, then he dies. It, it's accepted that whoever can take that sword out will rule Britannia, will be the king, Will everyone will recognise him as the king. So, of course, everybody's trying to get it, and they can't. Years later, there is a turn. All, all the all the bishops invite the the rulers, the kings, the noble people of England to London to celebrate God um, at, at at a festival. At the end of the festival, there's going to be a tournament, right? There's going to be a big battle, joust, and all that kind of thing. And it, I love it, that power. Yeah, it's implied that they just go like, you know. Oh yes, and all God, no yes, made a hundred percent. Oh I, and then they're looking at you know, yeah. It's like the it's like waiting for the buffet to open at a, at a at a function. Yeah, they're like, like oh yes, it's like going to mass on cup final day. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Sitting in mass going. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. United, United have an early kick off here. What yeah. do you want to do? Talk about a book with a little old guys, or see someone get their head cut off? <laughs> that's that's the choice they've got. So they're in London. Now, Sir Acton is there because he is one of the most respected knights. Dan, what's, what, what are you... No, no. You just no, notice something? No. no. Uh, okay. Actor. Who's there? Sir... Sir... Actor? Yeah. Right. I think Sir Act- Actor. Actor is the one who looked after... Sir Actor, right? Mm-hmm. So he's there. Um, and he is involved in all the battles. He's like the most respected guy. And the sword... Is there, right? In but, the stone. In the stone, but no, it's it's just it's around, but it's been years since, maybe been a couple of decades or something, since it's been put there. Uh, no, I'm gonna say I'm totally guess. I'm gonna say like it's been like 15 years or something because Arthur's really young still right. in this story. So Sir Acton's son is a pretty respected guy, and he's making his debut as a knight. So he's gonna be doing a bit of joshing, doing a bit of sword fighting. He wants to get involved, get his name out there, but. Arthur and Arthur's brother, Squire, which is like that must be where that phrase comes yeah. from. Maybe it originated there. Right, um, Squire. I love, I fucking love that. You ever be in London and go, oh, Squire? I love that. They usually don't say stuff like that to me in London. They usually just don't speak. What do you mean? Yeah, because no one speaks to me in London. Oh, you're lonely. all scared, no? That's lonely. Oh. Um, so, but then we, but remember, we went, we went, so who was nice? I was nice. So, <laughs> you need to make new friends in London when you're yeah. over. So, so who's the place to do it? Um, so, there's this tournament. What happens is, Sir Acton's son, Sir Actor's son, actor, right? The, the director, Sir Actor, that's how I remember it. The director. The director's son says to uh, Arthur, who is just like not recognized as like noble or anything like that. He goes, I have a battle here. Will you you I need my sword. You forgot my sword. So Arthur goes back to like their tent or whatever to get the sword. He realizes as he gets there he's forgotten it. All he's brought to sheath, he hasn't brought the sword. So he's like, Ah, oh, Balex, what's he gonna fucking do? Fucking stupid moving it. Very what gives the fucking sheath? Exactly. It's like bringing a dom and no dick. Well Well put. Thanks. You say, what What did you say? What What use is the sheath? Yeah. This story culminates in the sheath being more important than the sword. Interesting. That's great. Is that allegorical? I, don't, I still don't know what that means. Um, it's fact. Women so, are more important than men, perhaps. Pardon? A woman is more important than a man. Sheath, sword. Right. Oh, okay, get you, get you, get you. <laughs> That's how I need things explained yep. to me, right? See that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Allegory. Right. <laughs> Allegory. Yeah. There you go. So, he goes, I need you I need you to go back, get this sword. He goes back, realises he only brought the sheath, has forgotten the sword. Then he sees a very impressive sword in a stone. He goes over to it. He's like, here, if no one's using this, maybe I can cover my mistake by bringing him this. Very impressive sword. So he goes up to it. Here he is. Boop. Lifts it out. Lifts out the sword. I bet you know who I would have been in this scenario? The last guy that tried yeah. before him. <laughs> yeah. I, and I'd be standing there going, I loosened it. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like opening you're a can of beetroot or, or a jar of beetroot. You're the guy at the arcade machines. 
I started that for you. I started that. He gives a cut. So um, he takes it to uh, Sir Ector's son, and Sir Ector's son recognizes it for what it is. But when Arthur took it out, he was being watched. Um, so he takes it to uh, Sir Ector's son. Everyone starts going, where'd you get that? Sir Ector's son sees the royal seal on it, knows what it is, and says, I took this out. I, he knows about the legend. He says, I am the rightful king. Squire's doing this? No. Arthur? Sir Ector's son. Arthur? No. Squire? Arthur has went and got this for Sir Ector's yeah. son. His wee brother, Squire. Don't worry about them. Right, okay. This is Sir Ector's son. Dad, maybe you could get me his name. Uh, Sir, somebody else. He goes, I, I'm the king of England now. Right. I am the captain. And everyone goes, Do you, then the archbishop and Sir Ector, his dad comes over and goes, do you swear on the Bible in front of God that you took that out? And he goes, nah, it wasn't me. It was Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> like, he shits it. He completely shits himself. And he's like, Sir Kay. Sir Kay. Sir Kay. So Big Sir Kay, Sir Kay holds his hands yep. up and you got to say, fair play to him. Historical well, good guy. Because he could have pushed it. I would go HFF, historical fanny fort, mate. That's like, it's just a big, <laughs> just a useless dick. You know? All he needed to say was yes, but he's like, nah, you got me here, boys. <laughs> so he goes, Arthur did it. People still don't believe that Arthur's done this because Arthur's a kid. He's young. Maybe he's a teenager. I'm not yeah. sure. So what they do is they put the sword back in and then all these knights push him out of the way and they all try because they think maybe it's loosened or something. None of them can do it. At the end, they said, Arthur, right, you have a go. He pulls out it with ease. He is crowned the king of Britannia, the king of England, whatever. He's the main man. He's done it. That's mad, isn't they it? They say, how has just this... People are raging, though. They won't... See, to be the king or ruler of somewhere like this, everyone has to be on board. Ah. And it's very hard to get everyone on board because of politics and old grudges and things like that. The DUP, just stinking it up. <laughs> yeah. yeah, placards. Yeah. So um, what happens is a guy who is important that I should have mentioned earlier, Sir Orpheus. Sir Orpheus was Uther Pendragon's right-hand man and he hates Merlin, but him and Merlin took Arthur to Sir Acton when he was born. So Sir Acton... Uh, Still actor. Sir, <laughs> Sir Orpheus basically says, listen, I know who he is. He's not just anyone. He is the blood, the bloodline. He is the rightful king. And everyone respects Sir Orpheus so much that they go, "He's he, fair play. If he's saying it, it's true. Arthur becomes the king. Like, isn't that wild? That is mental. I sort of think, I mean, sifting through the cake here. There's I reckon, a lot more cake to come. I reckon that there, I reckon, so basically around the time of the removal of the sword and the stone, and people, maybe Arthur's being groomed to be something like, maybe a king or whatever, and then they go here, we'll get the stone out of the sword, or a sword out of the stone for you. And then it's like, let's, let's backdate the story where oh sure he's not Ector's son he's actually fucking Uther's uh, because do you remember that time Uther do you remember the time Uther became the Duke of Cornwall for the night yeah to get us all and bucked a hole <laughs> clean off Egrin <laughs> off t do you remember baby girl <laughs> what's your name I don't do you know many t songs I don't think you do no I'm not a T-Pain guy here's the thing about t people think oh he can only sing with autotune that's his trademark style autotune fuck you Fosty <laughs> that's the first time I've been hit with a light <laughs> anyway t, -T, -T can sing without autotune t, -T, -T -Pain's auto what I would get like if I spill a wee bit of boiling water on myself or something you know anyway Arthur uh, becomes the <coughs> king and he appoints Sir Orpheus as his right-hand man. He enlists Merlin as his advisor. Convenient. So he's got a good lineup, and people absolutely love it. Now, one thing that Uther Pendragon tried to do was establish a new capital at Camelot, and he started some building work there, but all these nobles weren't happy that they had to pay for it, basically. So it was left half done, you know? You ever drive past the house and go, that's a shame. Yeah, when you see when you see it's like when it's left in the middle of like phase one. Exactly. Yeah. So our boy Arthur goes, let, let's get that going. He Plan starts permission. Yep. He yep. starts a new period of 
grow, economic growth of prosperity, everything in Britannia, everyone like gets behind him. He starts alliances with people. He he actually goes abroad and gets like some alliances going. So people think this guy's great and he's he, he's really, really celebrated. One thing he does is he gets rid of bad. He's seen as this like whiter than white kind of guy. Um, he gets rid of loads of problematic like knights and noblemen that are entitled and things like that. Takes their land off them, distributes it more amongst the people. Sounds like a Stalinist purge, you know. S- sounds like a historical good guy, but mm. that that causes a lot of problems. That he that he does that. Now, he, if I get this right, he was uh, he used to go out with Merlin, but not wear the like royal gear, so he could just be not judged. A man of the people. When he meets people, he, he wants them to judge him for him and not who he is. So him and Merlin are out one day, and they hear reports that uh, there are these, like, what are called walking knights. Mm-hmm. So it's these knights and noblemen that had loads of land and were kings of certain areas, but Arthur's taken their land off them for, like, valid reasons. Mm-hmm. But they are pissed. So they're what's called walking knights. They're roaming around. And you know what they're doing? Because they're walking mayhem. impressions. <laughs> Cut to me doing one. <laughs> he, he took my land from me. I can't do it. No, you can't. So <laughs> Sorry. I'm, uh, actually, I'm actually sorry I tried it. Yeah. So I wasn't bad. I know, but that's all I could do. Uh, yeah. Why? That's, that's all right. Better words. So uh, they're, they're what's called walking knights. They they will not bow to anything, and they're walking around. Basically, like imagine a king outside his castle, but still acting like a king. Yeah. So they're walking around, uh, causing a lot of trouble. And Arthur sends various like knights of his own to take care of these guys. He stumbles upon one of his friends who he sent out to go after this knight who is taking this forest as his own. Um, and the guy's like gravely injured. He said, "Who did this to you?" He said it's this knight called it's like Pele or something, but it's not Pele. Um he is this Sir uh, Amazing footballer. Peleste or something. He's he's this like top knight, right? Britain's next top knight right. is this guy. He's like going out to Kelly's in Port Rush. A best knight. Pelinor. Pelinor. Right. So Pelinor is like a scary guy. Right. He's a black knight. He has got this like forest that he's almost like taken as his own there's a path through the middle of it and he is not letting people pass he's basically being like so immature he's basically being like a what um shitty neighbors that like did you ever have somebody that would like stab your football yeah he's like no that. you know what he is he's the m50 toll oh uh, he set up a toll and it's like just let people pass but he's like no but he, te- he fucking texts you about it he doesn't need do you know what he does he sends you a letter a few months later yeah. when you forget. Yeah, oh, what yeah, cunt. yeah. So he has all these shields up of famous people he's like killed and battled against. And he's just in this forest, ominous as fuck. He's killed one of Arthur's mates. So Arthur says to Merlin, listen, I'm going to sort this out. Merlin goes, I wouldn't. Take my advice, don't do it. Arthur goes, I'm the, I'm the king, I've got to go and do this. Goes into the forest. Uh, what's he called, Dan? Pel- Pelinor? Pelinor says, who goes there? <coughs> he doesn't know who Arthur is. Arthur says, you you fucking, you, t- you hit my mate. So I, now it's me and you. It's me? You can't? They have a battle. Mm. I go here. Yep. They have a battle. Who goes there? I goes here. Yeah. I goes there. I goes everywhere. <laughs> so we ha- they have a battle and um, Arthur fights really well, but Pelinor is seen as one of the best warriors anywhere so there's a there's a bit of a bloodbath Arthur is hurt falls off his horse but his leg's still on the stirrup the horse runs away with him so like that's pretty degrading and he's just bobbing around. he's the king yeah. but he's just like bobbing along the ground Get runs out of the forest Pelinor's just standing there like that's right you eat dick you know Pelinor's like yeah so Arthur goes away and he's like he's bad he's wounded he Guinevere finds him and he thinks he thinks she's the most beautiful woman he's ever seen. Her dad is. Can you find out that uh, Dan who who Guinevere's father was? Uh, no, Ludacris. Yes, Ludacris. 
Yeah. <laughs> That's what I heard. <laughs> Luda, well, just fucking. You know Arthur has bros in different area codes, <laughs> and Ludacris is one of them. Let's call him Ludacris from now on. So, um, Guinevere, Arthur thinks she's the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in in, in his life. She kind of helps him, um, and what happens is in that battle, the sword, the famous sword, the sword from the sword and the stone, Excalibur. No, not Excalibur. Is Excalibur not the sword from the stone? Nope. Stroked. Go Let ahead. me tell you. Right. Let me tell you, Karen. Yeah. Yes. I love it. <laughs> You're wrong about something. <laughs> and I know the facts. I know the facts. Yeah. <laughs> so I'll fuck it up telling it. So the, the, the sword from the Sword and the Stone gets damaged. Right. And this is such a historical, I'll tell us quick. It gets damaged. Uh, it's lost. Arthur's like, what am I going to do? People respected this sword so much that I'm worried they won't respect my rule. Right. And if they hear that uh, fucking Pelestieri, has, Man United winger, has, has destroyed it, the, the, I won't have the, so much authority. So what Merlin, Merlin says, listen, that was the sword that got you to where you are. Why don't we go and find a weapon that's going to shape Britain forever? Arthur, How class is that time? Arthur takes the hog out and goes all about that for a <laughs> weapon. Yeah. So, Hamelot. So they say, <clears throat> yes. So the, uh, Merlin takes Arthur to uh, to like this lake out in the middle of nowhere and it's it's uh, it's really misty, it's foggy. Uh, Merlin puts some powers on it. He says, watch this, kid. All of a sudden, all the, all the mist clears and in the middle of this lake there's a female hand holding this very impressive sword with a sheath. So they row out to it and uh, the woman speaks to Merlin and she says, uh, we're part of the ladies of Avalon. We we live in this world just like you, but we live under the water. We swear allegiance to you. We think you can be great. If you And he's like, can I grab they that They live sword? under the lake. Yeah. They're mythical figures, right? Right. She's, well, he, he, she says, this sword... Is this like the sword? This is the dog's ball, she says. He goes, Oh, cheers. Hand grabs him. This lady says, You've got to go out and see our, I don't know if it's queen, but this figure. Um, and she will judge whether you're worthy of this sword. And if you're not worthy of if you're worthy of it, you get the sword. If you're not worthy of it, she'll drag you to the bottom of the ocean, uh, bottom of the lake, and, and you'll perish. That's fucking dead on, isn't it? So he goes, No pressure. Here he is. Pressure's for Towers Girls. And he just. Merlin loves it. Merlin's like, oh, a belter. So he, he rose out. Uh, Merlin would then go on to say it and always say he said it, but we were yeah, like, nah, yeah. you didn't. So he rose out and, it, and and this lady drags him under the water and she has these like crazy eyes and she speaks to him under the water and she says, prove why you're worthy of this sword. Prove it. So she doesn't necessarily say he's worthy of it, but she knows he can be. He goes up to the surface he has the sword. He has the sword. Merlin says to him, the sheath is more important than the sword. The sheath holds a lot of power. So you guard that sheath with your life and the sword. So, um... Merlin's all full of fucking wee bits of... He's an annoying cunt, isn't he? Just he is. like a, he's full of all wee annoying... Here. Yeah. There's always a caveat. Here, mate. Do you know what he is? He somebody that goes, here... See out there, salami, and that's Subway. That's not salami. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's only people that'll say stuff like, oh, he'll say something to you mental, like, uh, have you, I, I, I took ayahuasca, I was speaking to the aliens last night, and you go, and I go, oh, you're still asleep. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. That's who Merlin is. Yeah. What cunt. <laughs> I like Merlin. You don't like Merlin? No. Um, so we'll, we'll pick it up around here. Arthur's on his way back to his, um, to his kingdom. And he hears that there's been a little bit of a, a disturb. Oh no, he doesn't go back. You know where he goes on the way back? Back to the forest, the forest of Peloton. Pelinor. Peloton. Uh, he does a bit of Peloton to really get his fucking arse get, in shape. Yeah. And get he that wounded leg back. He goes back yeah. to Pele and he says, "Hey you, remember me?" And he goes, "Yeah, you eat dick. You come back for more." He goes, "Fuck, fuck, oh, big, fuck." He does that. <laughs> <laughs> He gets this new sword. And that sword, Kieran, is a sword of... Excalibur? Yes. All of a sudden, uh, Pele's like, 
what the fuck? And he and they have a battle, and uh, um, and at the end of it, Arthur basically has him. And Pelly Peloton goes, "You got me, fur douche." Fur douche. He goes, "If you spare my life, me and my family will swear allegiance to you forever. You're a courageous warrior, and I bow down to you." Arthur goes, "Real recognize real." Pound it, they pound it. All of a sudden, Arthur is uniting everybody. Ludacris gets in touch with him. Ludacris gets in touch with him, and go, who's an ally? And he says, "Listen, the Saxons are coming after me, bro. What do you? Can you help me out?" Arthur goes, "No problem." They go. He crushes the the Saxons. Right. Okay. Ludacris at the end of this battle says to him, "Listen, whatever you want, because the Saxons have come for Ludacris's daughter." Guinevere. Another specific gay. Oh, uh, Guinevere's gay. Guinevere. Gay gay. Yeah. So they come for that. Now, here's you know what, what I like we need to introduce here: another a HSG historical sweet gay. That's what we need to right, do okay. here. You know don't I mean? pat the Nepalese. The Nepalese soy boy does like he's he he's like uncorruptible. That. Like yeah. yeah, don't go to him with that. <laughs> yeah. So. The, this is why I kind of like this is why I kind of like Arthur right he's cheeky right because what he does is Ludacris gets in touch with him and goes they're coming to evade us they want to like marry my daughter and take her away because she's Guinevere's the most beautiful woman in the world <laughs> he doesn't think. want to marry her go ahead <laughs> yeah. they go they want my daughter they're coming after me for my daughter Arthur hears this and goes listen mate I wouldn't even ha- I wouldn't have that I'm not having that he comes crushes the Saxons they disappear <laughs> Ludacris goes thank God for that Legend, mate. What do you want? This thing. Quite literally, legend. Yeah. <laughs> Arthur goes. Yeah, you know the way that. I can't believe those bastards wanted your daughter. You know what I want? Your daughter. Yeah, yeah. So Ludacris like, ah, you bastard. <laughs> <laughs> he goes. He goes. I couldn't think of him. Arthur goes. <laughs> Arthur goes. He, Ludacris says, "Here, thanks for saving the saving the day, saving my daughter. What do you want?" And Arthur goes, "Toast." <laughs> and your daughter's pull the old toast. <laughs> do you remember that? I don't know where I saw that before. He says, uh, "Toasty old toast." Ludic- funny. Ludic- well, there was a guy got in between oh, Ludacris sorry. and Arthur, and Ludacris said, "Move, bitch, get out the uh, way." He says, pussy, "Arthur, what do you a want?" Pussy toasty. Go ahead, Kieran. Sorry. So <laughs> he says, "I want your daughter." Ludacris says, "No better man for the job. You're in." Uh, Arthur and Guinevere You're in. get. <laughs> Arthur and Guinevere Enemy. get together. Yeah. Then. Ludacris goes touch a class from Ludacris he's giving Arthur what he wants Ludacris goes not just giving you my daughter mate gonna give you a table Arthur goes uh, he's probably like oh no don't worry but you know he's, he's like he appreciates it but don't he's probably how much room I have in the new apartment here <laughs> yeah. like is there I don't know if there's space for this yeah. yeah he goes he goes nah 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 wait till you see this table he's like throw it around a habitat for humanity you mad cunt <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's fucking bad. He goes. He goes. If you thought my daughter was unbelievable, wait did you see this? What is it? It's a. It's a. It's furniture. So, it's a. He goes. Thing about this table thing, why you like it is a wee bit jazzy. It's a round table. Arthur takes Guinevere and the round table to Camelot. Establishes the round table as the knights of the round table. He gets all these knights. He's got uh, Sir Orpheus. He's got who was uh, Sir Ector's son? Sir Kay. Sir Kay, uh, Merlin. He's bringing all the best noblemen around, and uh, and and Camelot is established as this like unbelievable capital, and everything is good, and he rules really well. Until Lancelot fucking Guinevere loves it like. So I think what we almost could do is a part two to this. Yeah. Because I want to I wanna leave that there. But everything comes full circle. In lo- this. It comes like around. Theater. There's a couple of bits here. Mate. Five. Thanks. I was very well presented. There's a couple of bits of this though that sound a wee bit well, spurious to me. Let's, get, let's now get into the, the, the validity of this because the, obviously the dark... Yeah, the dark ages... Like there's no nothing happens. I'll, I'll tell you what didn't happen in the dark ages: mer people, right? People living under the water. Yeah, I'll, I'll say this though. That's you, a bit of this. You go, nah. That's where I go. How bad? How badly? Right. So after he fights Pelinor the first time, 
Yeah. And he, he gets dragged through the woods wounded, so he's bleeding all over the woods and he's been dragged through the fucking shit by his horse. Is there a chance that either in the his wound was rubbed a wee bit of fungus or was he just bleeding out and he starts saying shit because there's no chance that he went to the lake and went, oh, mate. What's funny is the sword and the stone happened before this, so you're like, oh, he pulled the sword out of the stone. Like The bit about the sword and the stone that I don't buy is that they put it back in and nobody could remove it yeah. and except him. But remember, Kieran does believe in magic and bits of the Bible, so... I Kieran am, does I'm, believe I'm in, open-minded. Kieran does believe in every single topic covered in this series so far, but... I don't believe that there was women living under a lake. Right, okay. Don't care how hot they were. Like. What about Ricky Lake? No. So, partly why... The 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 short... Uh, the short of it is this, right? He was mentioned... For the first time he's ever mentioned Arthur, this idea of King Arthur, this mythical guy, is in Celtic poetry. When he is mentioned, obviously years after the Dark Ages, but as close to it as they can kind of mm. get, it's not that the story of him is told they talk about this warrior like this king this legendary guy and they say he's no Arthur you know what I mean right right so okay. he's being used as a term of like yeah you know if we're talking about Pele the footballer yeah he's good but he's no Pele yeah 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 so that's why they're thinking a guy might have existed like I, loads of stories this person might have existed I can see that there's a possibility that there was a guy I can even see a possibility of a big ass sweet table, right? The bit I, I'm one bit that's sort of interesting. I think that's how darts was uh, invented, invented. Yeah, one one bit one bit that is kind of similar to the Ku Holland story, the Satanta story, is this idea that he was really young. You know, like oh, this guy was like laying waste to people when he was like fifteen and all. Yeah. Because in the Celtic cycle, Satanta's meant in some of bits of it, I think he's meant to be like seven and eight years old. But he has like fucking kids and all. Do you know what I mean? So it's obviously the reduction of your age and overblowing of your achievements makes you even greater. Right. Do you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. oh, here, by he time. Was two. You know what I mean? Yeah. Mariah Carey was writing songs and she was in the womb. Like, you know what I mean? So but he, like, um, I, I, I think with this, it's been like, like loads of stories. It's been layered up over time. So it starts off as like, just this this guy pulled the sword out of a stone and then they add this element to it and that element but the elements of it come from like like there was French poets and historians who wrote about him so they're adding on a bit there was probably uh, people from other parts of the world that just add bits to it mm. and then you get this like amazing story at the end of it but I suppose there definitely could have been a king there's a, a king theory author. that it was uh, a Roman Sort of British leader. Ambrosius. Ambrosius Aurelianus. Yeah. <coughs> so they think he was the last, probably like the last Roman in Britain. Right, okay. Um, I've never heard that before. That's, I, a, th that's a theory. I I sort of, here's here's the bits that I don't believe, right? I don't believe the Murr people. You're I, so against Murr people? I just, I'm, I just don't believe it. Right. Um, <laughs> Scared of Under the lake. Yeah. <laughs> On where, the, where else the, would they be? the water pressure alone, <laughs> uh, I just I just don't think that's but they, feasible. But they've adjusted for it. But are they, are they people? Is she half fish? Huh? Is your woman half fish? The one that's meant to be, yeah, yeah all yeah. mad eyes and all. Yeah. I reckon I reckon what's happened there is Arthur has been dragged over a, a shrimp or two in the forest, right? And Wim Hof's got him, and and some some woman. Some mad woman that lives out in the forest fucking scrubbing her cats. Right. She's fucking found him and he's going, you're beautiful. Right. Just handing him a blade to go back and kill Pelinor now. What What do you think, like a lot of these stories like are, um, what do you call it when something is a story designed, set up to have like a life lesson in a parable? Yeah. Right. So do you think the story of this is like... Destiny? Do you think it's to do with destiny? It might be to do with don't try so hard for a specific gay because it leads to trouble. <laughs> that might be the parable here. The parable of the specific gays because he he goes out. So it all starts with Uther going, there's a specific one. 
Yeah. Then it becomes the sa- the, the entire Saxon nation. So you're saying a, a better lesson for life is be unspecific about your gay? Just, just find a gay that works for you. <laughs> you don't need to involve an army to get it. You know what I mean? But do you think part of it is like relax and everything will will work out? No, definitely not. Arthur doesn't relax. Arthur, it, if anything, it sort it's of does. if anything, it's escalate to the point where people surrender. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? He like I'll say this: say if it was me and Pelinor was in front of me, going, "Spur me, and I'll swear allegiance to you forever." No. Nah. Yeah. Run you through? Did you? Sorry, you just hacked the leg of me. You can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you were slobbering whenever I was getting dragged around by a horse. You didn't stop it and yeah. go swear <laughs> allegiance to me, and I'll spur you. You fucking said here, away on. Let this horse drag you through the shit. Dan, is there any other uh, ideas of what the meaning of this could be? Or could we look into, like... Uh, I think there's probably mm-hmm. too much of the story for it to be a parable. It's too long, surely. Mm-hmm. Her parable's not more simple. Well, usually, yeah, it's usually like a... A few like pages a, wee, like or... a wee quick sort of, you know... Do you believe some, in destiny? Some guy was fucking eating chickens. What? Do you believe in destiny? Um, to what degree do you believe... Well, the things are like predetermined. Yeah, I don't know, I don't know, but that that's gonna fuck me up. I I don't think so. I believe in free will. Good movie. Free Willy, it is good. What about what about uh, sequels? Per yeah. Um. What about um? I mean, sure. How's this fucking will keep getting trapped anyway? Uh, the patriarchy. It's all an allegory, and but what about? <clears throat> it's actually free will is actually about a fat woman yeah the sorry the I always say it there is... um, so there, there was some so I, I happen to know the Richard Burton great actor personal hero of mine uh, he played Arthur in a revival of, of Camelot which was like a popular musical but he, pl- he played Arthur in this massive version of it and uh, there's video of him giving the speech where he tells Guinevere about taking the sword out of the stone. And it's fucking amazing. that Him acting it is unbelievable. But also, when he came on stage that night, you know, he had a terrible drink problem. Uh, right. When he came on stage that night, he had a bottle of vodka in, his, uh, in, his, in a drawer, basically, a locked drawer in his dressing room in case it went badly. And his, his wife at the time knew to open it if he wanted it or not. And... um. But when he went on stage in America, they gave him like uh, something like a stand ovation at the start, just when he came on stage for like three minutes. Isn't that mental? And I, I believe in that more than I believe in this. Right. I think this is a myth. First time you've gone for that? Yeah. Hit or myth? I'm, I, 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 I'm more, I don't believe the sword and the stone sort of thing, but I do, I do believe that this could well be a guy. I think it could be a guy from history. I think it's too too close to being a, an amalgam of different people. Mm. Uther, Arthur, you was, know. Is it more likely Uther was real? I don't think either no. of them. I don't know. I think it's all a bit... I just like to believe in a world that there could have been a guy walking about at one point called Uther Pendragon. Or with, a, with a sword. I don't care. I just the name. The name's more impressive. I want him. to believe that somebody became king. By ripping a sword out of a fucking rock. Yeah. That's what I want to believe. But yeah. it's a myth to me. Yeah. Similarly, my son dropped a TV, a sky remote down the back of our radiator. And my wife went, that's stuck in there. Cut to seven minutes later. Made the remote in my hand. Is it? King. King, mate. Of your own castle. Yeah. Unlike Arthur, I didn't go on to like Rule Britannia. I just stuck on Mr. Tumble. But... <laughs> There's still a lesson in there. And the lesson is, don't try and pull it out at the bottom. There's not enough room. Push it, work it to the edge of the radiator. Oh, simple pull out from there. Uh, always pull out of the side. Is that what you're saying? Yep, always. Um, I enjoy the story. I've never, I actually haven't seen the the movie that Clive Owen's in. Oh, neither have I. What's that? Yeah, he, play, he plays Call Arthur. King Arthur. King Arthur, yeah. Oh, original. Uh, what about... Have you seen First Night? No. With uh, Sean Connery, Connery and yeah. Richard Gere and Julia Roberts, is it? Mm, no, not no. Julia Roberts. Is it what Mary... No, Claire? no, she's, no, she's Robin Bell. Hood. Who plays Who plays Guinevere in First Night? Well, I haven't seen it, mate, so I wouldn't know who plays it. 
It's crucial. Um, Are you sure it's not Roberts? Julia Ormond. I must watch a Clyde. I don't even know who that is. No. Um, but Richard Gere was the best looking woman in that film. What? The Excalibur would be the most famous decent film. I don't think I've seen that. Who's in that? that old? Yeah, it's old. Mm. Helen Mirren's in it. Oh, uh, I have seen John that. John Borman directed. Have seen that. Good. That is good. Yeah. Anyway, good story. Uh, we're both going with myth. I think, I think. myth. We're going with myth. It's not enough history in it. Dark Ages is kind of fucking it a bit, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Great name though, Dark Ages. Like Dark Ages. I'm fascinated that's a great, by the that's Dark a great Ages. name for a shop. You don't even know what it sells. Yeah. Low Dark Ages. You go in and all you do is like tap your card, but you can't even see the machine uh, and you're given something in you a don't bag. Even know what you you're don't getting. know what it is. Yeah. Hello. Hello, Dark Ages. Open nine to nine every day, but nine to twelve on a Sunday. Oh yeah. AM or PM? Boo. Yeah, yeah. <gasps> Uh, Kiri B, thanks. Uh, thank you, everybody. For, so I, I really didn't know fucking nearly any of that. It's thanks. not something that's ever coming to pull, your pull the the stone out of pull the sword out of my stone. I whatever. It's n- I don't want to see you pull the sword out of your stone. No. Uh, thank you very much for watching, for listening to this episode of Mysteries. We will have more in this limited series. Who knows what we'll be discussing next time? But we will find out whether it's hit or myth. I didn't look at any of the cameras for Okay, that, historical high five anyway. Unless pat, pat the head of the H-H-F. nipple. Good boy. Good boy. Yeah.